Hello, welcome to my channel. I am Tori Lynn. Let's blossom today. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out the ColourPop Disney Design Collection. This is the Midnight Masquerade. Um, I did not buy the entire collection because it was pricey, but I did get the eyeshadow palette, a blush, and a highlight. If you guys want to see how I created this look with these and what I felt about the products, just keep watching. Okay, so I have been waiting to film this video for like a couple of weeks now, and so I'm super excited. So let's just jump in. We're going to start with the foundation. I've already prepped and primed and all done all the good stuff to my skin. So I'm going to be trying out again a foundation I used in a video a couple weeks ago that didn't go super well for me, but we're going to try it again. We're going to do things a little bit differently. Um, it's the NYX Can't Stop and Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation. So the last time, I think what my issue was is I started with just too little product. I only took like two pumps on my beauty sponge and I think that what happened was by the time I had blended those two pumps out, the foundation was starting to dry on the skin and I felt like it needed more so I tried to build up over it and it just didn't work real well building up over the dry foundation. So I'm gonna take more foundation this time and see if that makes a difference. i roll my little sleeves back here because they were really long. Um, so I'm just gonna take Ooh, and I got foundation on my shirt already. Like, this is how this video is gonna go, I hope not. But let's just go ahead and, I've took quite a few pumps on there, a lot of foundation, a lot more than I would for most of the foundations I use, but, you know, we're gonna see if this makes a difference today. So I'm definitely getting a way more coverage from the foundation than I got the last time. And I think that was just the issue is I didn't, you know, use enough product to start with. And so just trying to build up made a mess. So maybe we should say this foundation is not buildable, but if you use enough in the beginning, you can get a nice full coverage from it. So looking at the foundation really nice and close, I don't have that splotchiness that I did before. I've got really nice coverage. It also doesn't look cakey like it did before. It had this weird dry patchy look to it and it doesn't have that now. So I think the trick is with this foundation, more is better, not less. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and conceal. Today I'm gonna be using my favorite Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Porcelain Beige. We're just gonna go and apply that under the eye, the bridge of the nose, and of course the forehead, and a little bit on the chin. Now I'm gonna take my setting powder. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in the shade translucent let's let our cake bake and go ahead and do our brows I have been staying with my uh, dip brow pomade from Anastasia this has been my go-to this is in the shade taupe and I'm just gonna go ahead and toss my brow after a struggle and a half we're back with the brows on and Let's see, let's do the eyes. Let's buff out those creases. I'm just gonna take that sponge that I set my, or baked my under eyes with. And just whatever product is left on there. Set that down, so, as I talked about in my intro. This video is all about the ColourPop Disney Design Collection of the Midnight Masquerade. I did not buy the entire collection. Didn't feel like I needed four blushes and four highlights. I really, really wish they would have had a bronzer in there. Would have been able to do the basically a complete face. To add a bronzer, I think would have really complete this collection for me anyways. First I bought the palette and then I was like, I need to do a full face in this. They didn't have a bronzer, so 
as they've stated about 500 times. There was no bronzer and I am sad. Um, if you haven't seen this collection, it's really, really pretty. They have a good mixture of shimmer and matte and then they have some real chunky glitter shadows. So I'll start with the palette. This is the little box that comes in and it has the names, excuse me, of all the shades on the back. And then the little palette is this fun kind of, I don't know what the shape this is to be honest. This fun little shape and it again has all the shadow names on the back. And then on the inside, I'll open her up here. So it's a little plastic thing. They've got all these really gorgeous, most of them are warm toned. There's only two cooler toned shadows out here, but they have, as you can see in the center, they've got these real, two really chunky glitter shades and then some shimmers and then a lot of mattes. And actually I think this is also a shimmer. On the top, they don't have a mirror, but you have this really pretty picture of a bunch of the princesses. I thought it was weird that they chose um, Esmeralda from Hunchback of Notre Dame and not Ariel, like there's no Ariel in this palette, which I thought was weird, but they do have Megra from Hercules, Tiana from Princess and the Frog, Cinderella, Esmeralda, um, Sleeping Beauty, Belle. Well, actually, you know what? They have Rapunzel, and then this might be actually B, which it's not focusing very well. This might be Ariel, now that I'm seeing it. She does have red hair. This palette is really pretty. I'm kind of, I've been super excited to try this out. The blush and highlight palettes come in these cute little boxes as well. Each one's a little bit different. The mask is a little different. This one is for Tiana. This one is for Cinderella. Um, let's see, so this is, Tiana had the blush. So you open up the box here and the set is called Down in New Orleans. And it's got a really pretty picture of a little Tiana there. And then you open it up and it's got this beautiful display of the lip color and then the blush palette. So let me pull them out. This, here's a little closer up picture of her. So this blush is called Kissing a Frog. And it does have a little mirror. And then I picked this really pretty mauve -y. It does have a slight shimmer to it, which I'm not usually a huge fan of shimmery blushes, but I like this blush the best out of the ones that they had, at least not the store I went to. They did not have the entire collection. They had two highlights, two blushes, and then the uh, shadow palette. And so I picked out one highlight, one blush, and then of course the palette. And then this lip shade is called Prince Naveen. It's a really pretty deep red here. Honestly, I feel like this would be a really pretty holiday red of the Cinderella highlight. This one is called here. A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes. And it's got the pretty little Cinderella and I like how they included her castle back there on this one. And then of course you got again the same little setup as the one before with the little highlight and then the blush or the lipstick shade. So the highlighter is called Horse and Carriage. And it's got again the mirror and then um, a really pretty light highlight shade. Obviously you can see I have swatched her. So I just swatched the highlight there on, just around the thumb. And it is a very shimmery. I chose one of the lightest highlights they had because I felt like it would go best with my skin tone. I typically like a real light highlight. And then the lip shade is called Prince Charming. So I didn't look at the other ones but um, obviously what I'm getting from their theme here is the lipsticks are named after the prince in each movie. This one was Prince Jimmy and this one's Prince Charming. Um, but let me go ahead and swatch this. So it's this really pretty pink. I actually really like this pink. I feel like I have at least one lipstick fairly similar to this pink color, but um, I'll probably that'll probably be the one I'm going to use today. And then I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the blush for you. And the blush is swatched there. It's really soft, very neutral. I didn't want anything real strong. They did have, I wanna say it was the Megra highlighter. Was really purple, and then there was one that was super pink toned. 
and then they had some darker blushes that I didn't feel like or something I would wear so I went for stuff I thought I would wear let's jump into the eye palette let's start with our eyes I'm gonna read some of these names too they have some really cute ones um, I'm gonna be starting over here and working my way across the thing so it's spinning wheel and damsel pippin enchanted mama odie and then this one's frog and wife royal ball mrs potts floating lantern de holly or de jolly i'm not sure on that one meriwether quasimodo gaston then new dreams new dream and then nutmeg i'm gonna be going for more of a pink rosy look i'm really eyeballing this shimmery pink shade here which is called floating lantern i think i want that to kind of be the focal point of the eye i think i'm gonna jump into the shade called damsel it's this really pretty mauvey pink down here and i'm gonna work that into the crease this is gonna be our crease shade so i'll work that in and I'm gonna make sure to bring it all the way down into the inner corner as if I was putting in like a taupe or brown. I'm noticing right off the bat there's actually quite a bit of fallout dust on the palette already and I've only dipped into it a few times. So just be aware of that. Fallout is why I let my eyes continue to bake before I uh, do my eyes or while I'm doing my eyes instead of doing my skin first a lot of times you can sweep away light fallout with the baking these shadows seem to be pretty averagely pigmented they're not extremely pigmented they're not like I'm getting no pigment at all so um, let's go ahead and jump into the shade called new dream it's this really dark pink shade here. I'm going to be working with this shade a lot lower. I'm going to work start in the crease but on the lower end of the crease and then work it down onto the lid actually. Now I chose a fluffy brush because I want it to blend outward into that crease. Packing brush would work better to pack up the shade onto the lid but I wanted to make sure that that blended in the crease nicely still. I'm gonna go back in with that brush that I used on the first shade and just kind of sweep out that line, blend everything together nicely. Now I wanna use that shade that I talked about earlier, that glittery shade called Floating Lantern. And I'm going to guess that this is best applied with the finger. Ooh, so it's almost has a creamy, like a wet feel to it. But look at that. I mean, that is just gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and go and apply that all over the lid. So you can see I got a lot of fallout from that glittery shade but I mean look how gorgeous that is it's such a pretty rose goldy look I don't know I am loving this shadow I'm really curious to see what royal ball looks like now um that will probably be one that we'll be doing in another video coming up so keep an eye on that if you're curious to see what it looks like I will do a swatch here in a minute it is taking a few layers to get a nice good coverage with it but I think it's freaking gorgeous honestly this palette is worth it for these glitter shades I mean look at that that is just pretty so pretty I'm gonna try to swatch that other shade real fast with a brush and see if the brush makes a difference in how the shadow is applied this is a synthetic brush from Morphe just what I would call a packing brush and I'm just gonna dip into that shade here Automatically, I'm seeing I'm hardly picking up any uh, product on that brush. Let me try it, and so when I swatched it out, you can see like nothing. So let me um, 
spray the brush down and see if that makes a difference. Put a good couple of scores there. Okay, so wetting her down, I did pick up a little more, but it's still not as, um, don't get near as much pigment as picking it up with my finger does. One thing I do feel about this shade is you get a lot left over on both the, your brush or your finger. It kind of feel a little bit like it's a waste of product, but I mean, look at the difference in that swatch. That was one little swirl. But I mean, look at that. That is gorgeous. I'm gonna have to do a look with this too. This would have been really pretty in my um, my holiday look that I posted, like I think last week. This would have been really pretty instead of just that glitter. Trying to clean it up, you're gonna have glitter on your face for days after using this, I think. I mean, I wipe my hand off several times and there's still just chunks of glitter on there. But okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and take that shade that I, brush that I used to put on that second shade and just swoosh that along that line just to make sure you don't have any stray chunks of glitter let's stop there with the eyes and jump back into the face get rid of all this fallout and the glitter i'm just gonna go in with my anastasia loose setting powder that i used a few minutes ago to bake with i'm just gonna go and sweep away with a light hand any of that excess powder and this should also sweep away most of your fallout. I do have a few pieces in the inner corner in there. I don't know if you can see, but they haven't gotten swept away, but we'll take care of those. Okay, my face needs some color, some dimension, so let's bronze up, and I'm gonna use my favorite bronzer. This is the Hula Bronzer from Benefit. And I'm gonna go in with a Morphe powder brush here and just bronze up. up set my face and all the goods and we're now we're getting to the part that we have been waiting for the blush and highlights so I'm gonna start with my blush again this was ooh, this was the shade kissing a frog this was the Tiana shade in the collection just gonna take a dense crown brush and work that product on and blush up my cheeks so it's actually really very soft, very neutral. I mean, look at that, like it's just so pretty. Into a nice soft blush like that. Like I said, I picked shades that I thought would be something I would use and I will totally be using this blush quite frequently. I mean, look at that, it's just so pretty. I don't love it has just a hint of shimmer to it but I mean that's not that big of a deal especially because we're just gonna put in highlight over top like honestly you probably won't be able to tell let's do the highlight so I picked again the Cinderella shade which was called horse and carriage and it was that light shimmery shade and I'm just gonna take my kabuki fan brush also from crown She's a real subtle highlight. She's not strong like my Mary Luminizer, which I am a huge fan of. She's like, she's a subtle highlight. She's very pretty, but she's not popping like highlights that I usually would go for. Which is kind of sad, but I do like her. She is pretty. It's just really soft. I don't hate it though. I mean, this look, if I was gonna do a look with a nice, soft highlight and blush, this look would be it. This one is, you know, the eyes, we want the eyes to be the focus, so, you know, 
I guess this, that does achieve our look, but I feel like maybe I need a different brush. Maybe I need to try one a little more pigment, or you know, one a little more dense or a little different. It's like there is some shimmer there, it's just not, there we go. So I'm using my finger and that is making a difference. I mean, look at that immediately, it's just different. And I'm just realizing I forgot to contour my nose. So. She is pretty once you really focus her. So I think either the key is a different brush than I was using or using your finger because that's what I did over top and you could see, which I don't love using my finger. I feel like you kind of get more of a harsh line, but this is just me trying things out, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. But I do really like this foundation or this highlight. It's really pretty. Um, something I sometimes like to do will take my blush brush after I do my highlight and add just a little extra if I feel like things have gotten carried away. And actually that, like it just blends it all together a little more seamlessly. I'm gonna go ahead and contour my nose real fast. Or I'm just gonna throw my bronzer on the floor, you know. So I went ahead, contoured my nose, finished my face up. Let's go back into the eyes now. Um, I definitely have a lot of chunks of glitter on my lashes, so hopefully that's something we can take care of. So I wanna start with my, with my inner corner highlight, and I think I wanna use another shade in the palette. I think I'm gonna use the shade Spinning Wheel. It's this really light, shimmery shade there oh that is gorgeous she's not super strong she's pretty subtle but she has a really pretty pink undertone to her that i didn't realize she looks a lot more white in the pan but I'm glad that she has a pink undertone. I think it just pulls this whole eye look together. Okay, so if you've watched my videos before, you know I like to take a chunky, dense brush and just buff out that line between the brow highlight and the shadows. I was thinking a wing with this look, but now I'm looking at it and I don't really feel like I want to do a wing. I think I want the eyes, the eye shadow, to be the kind of focal point of this look. So I'm gonna grab my Benefit Roller Lash Mascara and give my lashes a nice, good coat. This is not my favorite mascara, but I wanna use it because I have it. And then I'm gonna go over top of it with my superhero mascara from Ink Cosmetics. To finish off the eyes, I think, I feel like I wanna smoke out that bottom lash line a little bit. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use that shade Damsel, which was the darker of the two shades that we used. And I'm just gonna focus it right on the outer corner. outer half of the eye. I'm gonna head and throw on a little mascara on my bottom lashes. But let's jump into the lip. Let's do our lips. So I have two lip colors here, and I'm thinking that the one from the Cinderella collection, or the Cinderella duo, which was Prince Charming, I think it's gonna look better with this look than the red from the Tiana section, which 
they're both really pretty, but that's just kind of what I'm feeling today. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. So the product is very dry, but it's creamy. I don't know if it will dry down more the longer it sits, but I do feel like it took a lot of product to build up to where I couldn't see my lip, my natural lip color anymore. I feel like I had to do several coats to make sure that it wasn't, you know, to make sure it was fully coated. Like, I don't know, but I do like the color and I think the color went really was a good choice to go with this look. So I am glad I picked that one. I mean, the red I think would still be pretty, but this one matches the pinks of the eye a little more. This is it. This is the look. We have tested out what I own of the collection. Um, I think I like everything. The shadows that I used were awesome. I love the shadows. The blush was super pretty. The highlight, wish it was a little more pigmented, wish it had a little more pop to it, but it was still pretty. And the lip color, I love the color that I chose but I do feel like it took a lot to build up so um, is there anything I don't like it that I use not really there's some things I wish were a little better yes but I love the eyeshadow palette so far I will definitely be putting out more looks with that so if you guys want to see those please hit the subscribe button it would mean a lot to me and hit the like button keep an eye out for those videos and I will see you guys next time bye